Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Thank you for joining us today. We're doing another Station Cribs. We're in Baltimore County in Maryland. We're going to be doing the Lutherville Fire Company, and they have a lot of cool stuff. So let's go take a look. So today we're going to meet up with David. He's the deputy medical director for Baltimore County Fire Department. So he's going to walk us through the Lutherville Fire Department house here. Thanks for inviting us in. Yeah, thanks for having us. So, uh, first of all, tell the viewers who you are, first and last name. Sure, uh, David Vitberg. Uh, I'm the deputy medical director for Baltimore County Fire Department, but I am a firefighter, volunteer firefighter at Lutherville Volunteer Fire Company. Okay, how long have you been with the service? About two years at Lutherville. Okay. Uh, in the county for over 10 years, but specifically at Lutherville for two years. Okay, thank you for your service. Sure. I appreciate it, especially being a paramedic. I always like seeing more medical police yeah. personnel on the fire side of absolutely. it. Absolutely. So can you kind of walk us through the house? Yeah, absolutely. We walk right into... Yeah, so this is our kitchen. This is our common area, uh, common place. You'll see us uh, preparing meals uh, when we have crew nights, full kitchen, bathroom. Uh, we even have an area back here where, if you follow me back here, uh, new younger members that are studying. Uh, we have a lot of local colleges, uh, members that are in high school can come in here, studies, uh, okay. do their studies. There's computers. Right, right. Um, we, we call this actually central booking, okay. uh, but <laughs> for some reason, like uh, but we got, you know, some recliners, people can play video games, they can do homework, we've got a printer. Uh, so this is kind of a, you know, a study area, fun area, game area. Right, right. Yeah, so you got two different Xboxes yeah. going on, stuff like that. So. Come back. So are you considered uh, all volunteer here? Are you a paid service? How yeah, so Baltimore County is very unique. Uh, we're a hybrid, a huge hybrid department made up of both career and volunteer stations. Uh, Lutherville uh, Volunteer Fire Company is a completely volunteer fire company. Okay. okay. Yeah, 24-7, uh, 365. We have no paid staff whatsoever. Okay. Do you uh, respond from home or do you get people on crew nights or crew yeah, days? Yeah, so responding from home these days is tricky. Uh, we do have a lot of members that live very close to the station and can make it. Uh, but because we are surrounded by career stations, the only way we really get out on time is to actually have crews in-house, which we typically do. Okay. That's awesome. So I love the kitchen. It's nice and big. You got all the industrial appliances that you need to, to take care of a crew. So if I was in the move, if I moved into this area and I wanted to become part of Lutherville Fire Company, how would I go about doing that? So I was in my front yard and uh, one of the members walked by as I was mowing my lawn and said, hey, you need to join Lutherville Volunteer Fire Company. Okay. Uh, but we have a website, um, uh, lvfc.com. Uh, uh, and uh, our website has a link for an application. Uh, you can come in anytime, knock on the door. If the bay doors are open, just walk right into where we are. Would right I now. have to have the education already coming in, like my Fire 1 or Fire no, 2 not, certifications? No, not, not at all. So uh, many of our members come in with nothing, and we'll help you get everything. We'll help you get into an EMT course. We'll help you get into a uh, MIFRI, Maryland Fire Rescue Institute, Firefighter 1 course. And then from there, uh, we just do a ton of in-house training. Monday nights are our training nights. Uh, you'll always find the bay door opens, the apparatus being checked training going on. So we, we do a ton of in-house training and that's one of the things I love about this company. Um, and there are, we're, we're also very unique in that a lot of our members are actually career firefighters either in this jurisdiction or other jurisdictions. Okay. And we're actually very fortunate that we've had a, a lot of chief officers uh, that have kind of gone up through the ranks that remain members of this company. So we have a ton of experience and wisdom in this house uh, to kind of guide and teach new members. So we're always training. Uh, you'll, you'll find people out back throwing ladders. You'll, you'll find the engine hooked up to the uh, to the uh, fire hydrant in the front pumping water. Uh, there's there's always something going on. That's awesome. So yeah. if you guys are in the area and you're interested in volunteering, definitely come down. Just you know, knock on the door, catch up with these guys, and uh, put in an application. They can definitely use your help. So the rest of this is your crew room. It looks like. Yeah. So <clears throat> kitchen table. Um, oh, and love, the, kinda, love the tables. We see a lot of these throughout the firehouses. The one thing that we found as we go across the nation is, you know, many of the fire, EMS, and police guys, we're kind of the jack of all trades. We do woodworking, we do cabinetry, we right, do, right. you know, mechanics, we do metal work. Right. You know, that's the one thing that, you know, we don't really think about in the lay public that 
a firehouse has to operate with all those people. The, all those trades people come into a firehouse, uh, and those are the things that you can contribute to that firehouse. Absolutely. I, I don't think I've ever uh, married three kids, live locally. I, I don't think I've ever called an electrician or a plumber uh, in the last few years. Right. They're, they're, they're all here. <laughs> That's awesome. And, and they're, all, they're all willing to help, which is great. Okay. So you got basically uh, some seating to yep. watch the... The games? Yeah, be beautiful, you know, recliners. Uh, I, I got to tell you, though, that uh, we're, we're typically on our feet. Uh, this is a very busy station. Okay. So this is our first due response map. Okay. And um, we actually sit right at the juncture of the Beltway going around Baltimore, Baltimore okay. 695 uh, and, and 83. Uh, so 83 is a major highway that goes into Baltimore and then goes north actually up into Pennsylvania. And we sit right at the intersection of, of those two major roads. So 83 is kind of split. This is 83 North, okay. 83 South, and the Beltway. Our station is right in here. Okay. So and this um, is actually Baltimore City. Baltimore City, correct. Okay. So we are a we are a very very densely populated area. Uh, we're, we're kind of a unique geographic area. Um, some of our second due boxes uh, uh, sit along the Lock Raven Reservoir. So we do a fair amount of inland rescues for hikers and bikers that have hit trees or got lost or twisted ankles or worse. Yeah. Um, we go from a very, very, very densely populated area around Towson and Towson University and our first do Lutherville Timonium to a very, very rural kind of spread out agricultural area in northern Baltimore County. So our first due are all these 30 boxes, Okay. Uh, but we will frequently get hit for kind of second due areas and then on... Uh, kind of multi-alarm calls right. on, on further right. areas. So we go from dense population to very, very spread out. Uh, you, you're kind of backland, wildland type stuff, water, uh, and to a very urban center. So it's a very, very diverse area. Yeah, uh, as a firefighter, that makes me kind of excited to you know have a company like that because right. you don't get stuck into one thing. Right. You know, in Chester County, we do have some stations that are out oh here right. and all they got are the uh, farmland kind of right. stuff and you kind of get bored or you're in the city and you're doing nothing but row homes and all right. kinds of other stuff you have a unique opportunity to cover a lot of different right. dis disciplines and one of the reasons we have the squad which i think you you were looking out out front with all our rescue tools is just because of the convergence of, of this heavily heavily traveled beltway around baltimore and 83 coming out of baltimore city and and up into pennsylvania right. just a very very heavily traveled route Lots of traffic, lots of traffic accidents that we respond to there. Right, right. Yeah. Can we see the rest of your house? Yeah, absolutely. Want to continue this oh, way? Okay. So we do have an elevator that goes up to our second floor administrative area and third floor uh, bunk quarters. Okay, we'll take a look at those yeah. in a little bit. So this is our gym. Uh, this is the Lutherville uh, okay. Body Shop. Yeah. Where we <laughs> it looks like Planet Fitness or uh, the, the yeah. Body Works kind of thing. Yeah, so. and this is, this is really a great, one of the many fringe benefits of being involved in a volunteer fire company like this is um, you don't need a gym membership. The one thing I like about this room too is it has your station colors on it. You know, right. as I drove up, yep. you know, I noticed the rigs were a little bit different than what mm -hmm. we've seen. You actually have the black on bottom, gold stripe, and white at top. Right. So, and that correlates right yes. through here. Um, yes. Yep, and every room we're in has our monitors just so we can keep track of all the incidents that yep. are going on. Is that an I am responding? What what service do you uh, guys normally that use? That is uh, FRR, I believe it's called. Okay. Um, comes come right out here to the bay. So this is actually a popular spot for folks to hang out. Um, I'll frequently sit here and do work when I'm not required to be in the office. <laughs> folks will kind of hang out on the couches here, but it's also a spot that we do a ton of training. We have a door where we forcible entries, practice yeah. forcible entry. Uh, we actually have a full apartment studio, okay. uh, kind of a bedroom setup up there. So we'll, we'll push this table against the wall. We'll actually throw ladders into those windows right. uh, and do kind of searches and uh, VFIS. Even the bailout and, drills yep, from up there. Exactly. Yeah. And we do have a, a kind of a bailout simulator right over there as okay. well. Man, this is a great setup. I like how you utilize all the space in the department. And uh, as you come around here, Kind of a continuation of the gym. Okay. Um, so all of our free weights, uh, the nice thing is we have stairs that go up to our museum and our meeting room, and that can also be used for exercising as well, carrying dumbbells and so forth. Right. Little basketball court uh, that we have inside here for you know when it gets cold. And then uh, simulated cross lays where we can load hose. Okay. If we don't want to pull one of the engines out. Um, window to go through, we can do bailouts down that ladder as well. Um, and for those of you into the CrossFit, we've got all the CrossFit toys <laughs> here as well. 
Yeah, this is absolutely awesome. I didn't realize that you know a firehouse could actually be utilized in so many different resources just in the back of your firehouse. Right. And what I like about this is we've been to some that look a little bit cluttered. Right. They just kind of put the stuff in the corner or the right. stuff. Like, you have this spread out very nicely, very well organized. Yeah. You've done a really yeah. good job of that. The, the other nice thing I just want to point out is our boardroom and a conference room that a lot of our members who are fortunate enough to still be able to work from home will utilize during the day to staff our apparatus, but also work is right up there. And it's nice because you have this perch that allows you to kind of look down right. on the engine bays and kind of see what's going on. Okay. You can certainly hear when the calls go out, the tones will go off up there, but you can also see who's coming and going, see who might be you know, uh, getting on a piece with you if, you if you get a call and have to go out the door. So it's a great place to work up there. Right. Can we go upstairs? Yeah, absolutely. Why don't we go up this way? Okay. So this is probably one of the most unique portions of the station. We actually have a, almost a full fire museum here uh, displaying a lot of the relics from Lutherville's history dating back to 1909, um, including a memorial for one of our firefighters that uh, we lost in the line of duty, Mark Falkenhand, in 2011. Wow. Um, just some of the um, memorabilia from his, uh, from his career here. Um, and, and outside of here and, and from the funeral procession and so forth. It's always tough when we lose fire guys, you know, EMS or police, but having a memorial like this uh, really pays contribute to his service, the service in general, and he'll always be remembered yeah. now. So it's Absolutely. something that's, you know, definitely needed. The fact that you guys put it in your museum is perfect, right. so. And if you, if, when we come outside and kind of walk back in, you'll see the name of the training center, bear, it bears his name. Okay, okay. You got the old host cart too. Man, you got everything in here. I didn't even realize this was here. As I was driving past, you right. know, I did a quick drive by. I noticed, you know, the building itself, but I had right. no idea all this stuff was in this building. Yeah. What's nice is we have our court, you know, our monthly meetings here. Uh, a lot of our trainings that we do kind of didactic stuff for, we'll do up here. And what's nice is when you come in here, you, you appreciate the tradition that you're walking into. Right, right. Uh, that it didn't start when you started a few <laughs> years ago, that this has been around here for, in this case, over 100 years. Down the hallway here. I... Yep. So if we kind of come down this way, uh, beautiful training center. And um, not only is it used by Lutherville Volunteer Fire Company, but a lot of uh, different organizations in the community will reach out to us asking if they can use this space. Uh, the career side of the department will often ask us if they can host training. Uh, you'll often see the SWAT team and police cars parked out back, the bomb squad. Um, this is just an absolutely beautiful training facility um, with kind of all your AV hookups and great lighting and comfortable seating, um, kitchen in the back, uh, bathrooms uh, to the side and, and the museum we just walked through. I can definitely see why this is a desirable place to be. You know, I, I work multiple different things, multiple different disciplines, EMS, fire, and police. Right. And you know, if we have a SWAT call out, we go to a firehouse, mm -hmm. we go to a police station, and this is a perfect place because right. we could have you know, 20, 30 guys at a time responding. This is a good place to kind of get right. that debriefing. Right. The other thing that I really enjoy about this is your decorations. Right. You're showing your history of Lutherville Fire Company as you go along, along with some citations that you got, right. and it looks like you know, past members and awards. Yep, it, it's, it's great. I mean, so carrying along with the theme of our boardroom that has the windows that overlook the bays, the nice thing about being here is you don't feel like you're stuck in a classroom. You still feel like you're in the life and the mix of the station. And if you look out the windows, you can see directly into our engine bay and see what's going on down there. And like you said, along the wall, we have pictures of every piece of apparatus we've ever had, uh, the unit citations from the fire chief uh, that members of our company or units of our company have been awarded over the years, different awards that we've won. So um, again, uh, it's not just a conference room, it's very steeped in the tradition of the station. And, right. Um, now, with a room like this, do you guys do public outreach and do community CPR classes or maybe seat, uh, car seats or anything like that? Um, we do. We do various events like that over the course of, of, of the year. And like I said, a lot of community organizations will utilize this space for those sorts of things. Okay. Uh, frequently, this room is utilized for Red Cross uh, blood drives just oh, because yeah. of the sheer size right. and kind of just the, the same level of accessibility from that back parking lot. So right. you, you'll see the Red Cross up here doing blood drives. You'll see community organizations up here. Um, like I said, you'll see almost every other uh, governmental organization that's in this jurisdiction asking and using this room for different sorts of trainings or, or planning and so forth. Okay. All right. I'll go back this way. Um, now we can kind of walk up to the second floor administrative area through here if you'd like. Okay. Um, let me let me just show you. 
my thought will work. Yep. So uh, the firefighter for which we had the memorial. Okay. Uh, the whole training, this whole portion of the building is, is named after him. Yeah. Uh, Mark Falkenhan. This is absolutely awesome. I had no idea this courtyard was even here. And, and it blends into the community nicely. It doesn't kind of stand out. We have a church kind of in the woods right behind us. Okay. Um, a huge, you know, residential community right in front of us. Um, so it's, uh, it's a beautiful structure. It's beautifully landscaped. I think it fits beautifully into the footprint of the community. And it flows well. So yeah. you got you know plenty of parking back here for everybody that needs to do it. Right. It flows right in, you get the right. training center, and then you can go into the engine bay if you need it. Speaking of nice landscaping, if we kind of take a peek over the ledge here, I can show you we have an area back here that's also, I think, pretty unique, but also just conducive for having people come to the firehouse, uh, hang out, have a outdoor eating uh, area here. Yeah, a little fire pit. Yeah, we have a fire pit uh, with an automatic kind of timer turn off right. that we can light up, gas grill, right. and that leads right back into the common room where the kitchen was and the kitchen table was uh, where we started our tour. Okay. And then some risers here that people can sit on, some more landscaping. Right, you definitely, you can almost hold a class out here right. too. Right, <laughs> and then you'll see as we came out of the training center, there's a, a nice kind of architectural feature. There's a bridge that indoor that kind of goes up to our second floor administrative offices. Okay, can we go take a look yeah, at that? Yeah, absolutely. All right. All right. So this is the uh, bridge that I was showing you from the outside. It's just kind of a cool, unique feature of the station. You can see the gardens we just walked through, the outdoor kind of living area with the fire pit and the grill right. and the table that people eat outside. Was of. this originally an outside part? Was this part this, of the This was outside. This okay. was part of the renovation. Yeah. yeah. I like the fact that it's actually handicap accessible too. Right. You know, having a ramp come up there uh, rather than any kind of stairs. I saw the elevator downstairs, uh, but even just having that little ramp makes a big difference for right. handicap accessible. So, so the second floor is our administrative floor. Okay. And uh, the first thing I'll show you here is our executive boardroom. And uh, again, it, it's uh, multifunctional. It's not only used by the board, which meets you know once a month or so, uh, but we do have a lot of members that are fortunate enough to be able to work from home. It's just a great place to set up your laptop, conduct your business, but also if you're in that group that can close your laptop and sneak away for a little while and go on a call, this is a great place to, to do your work. Yeah. Um, close the door, you can adjust the, the tones and how loud you want the volume. We have our screens up that show kind of the incidents as they come up. And just like the training center that we were in, there's this really nice view of the entire engine bay. So you can kind of have a pulse on what's going on in the station. Yeah, it's almost like that crow's nest feel that you get right. up here where you can kind of look down on things, make sure things are good. What I like about this, as a board member, if I am during a meeting, I can leave the engine bay doors open Absolutely. and the public come in and we know what's coming in. I don't right. have to ring a bell necessarily. Right. And I got to you know, see who it is or look on a monitor. See, I can look right here, it's right there. Right, nice and we open. have our, our board consists of both fire line officers and executive officers. So, you know, if Monday night we're up here and, and the tone's dropped and we've got a call, our captain who usually sits there can stand up and kind of look out and make sure that the crews that have been assigned to different pieces actually get on those pieces or if we need to kind of staff up those pieces, we can run downstairs. Right, right. And once again, nice big board table, yep. good, nice comfortable chairs. Right. Excellent, excellent. So the remainder of the second floor um, is office space. So okay. uh, we have our fire line offices, our captain, our treasurer, um, vice president, uh, the, again, fire line offices, our lieutenants, uh, our company secretary, and, and our president's office. Um, the cool thing that I, I love about the station uh, on every level, but particularly this level, are all the pictures of our history. And if you kind of uh, go back, you know, you'll see pictures of uh, our rescue squad cutting people out of cars on, you know, 83, Interstate 83, right. pictures of all the fires we've been to. Um, just some pretty, pretty incredible pictures of, of rescues. Uh, this was a, um, uh, a garbage truck that uh, rolled over a vehicle, and uh, you can see the patient was heavily entrapped. Right. And uh, you can see Lutherville was right in there. Uh, and this looks like a, it was a uh, picture in the newspaper. Yes. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And that was from 1987. Wow. 1989. Sorry. <laughs> I need reading glasses. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but all these pictures, just the history, right. um, some really cool relics from Baltimore, the entirety of Baltimore County. 
Yeah, the one thing that we have to understand for any fire station is you need that strong administrative staff kind of behind the scenes. Right. They're the ones that are making sure the bills get paid. They're the ones right. that are making sure that they're getting in the finance and, and mm -hmm. those kind of things to keep those trucks on the street. Right. Uh, granted, it's a volunteer service. Uh, so my question to you is, how do you guys raise finance for that? Are you tax-based or anything like that? Yeah, or? So um, I may not be the best person to answer this question. Okay. Probably a great question for our vice president of finance and our treasurer. Uh, but we do, uh, we get partially funded through taxes through Baltimore County, uh, but we also do an enormous uh, fund drive okay. and rely on the community to support us. Okay. Um, so when you see your fund drive, postcard, and flyer come in the mail, hit us up. It, 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 this, all, this all costs money, and uh, we have about 100 members here that get on our pieces and get out and protect the community. And that's a big Put group. out fires and do first response for EMS and cut people out of cars and... Um, help get cats out of engines and trees. So, right. you know, you name it, uh, we'll help you out. But um, it, it's a, it's an expensive operation. Okay. So another really unique feature of our station is our company store, which is on the back end of the station on the okay. second level, adjacent to our administrative offices. And I'm going to introduce you to Denny Fulton, Dennis oh. Fulton, who runs our store. Wow. You are Denny or Dennis? How you doing? How you doing? Nice to meet you. I'm Mike. It's a pleasure, Mike. Uh, what a beautiful store you have here. I had no idea if this would be even back here. Well, we try to do this so we can keep our members properly dressed so they look like they're supposed to when they're out on the scene. Right. Plus, we have our dress uniforms when we're doing special details. Okay. So, is this all issued stuff? Can I buy things? We um, issue the first shirt for people to go on details, everything beyond that, the members buy themselves. Okay. If I were a uh, lay public and maybe some of our viewers are thinking, hey, Lutherville looks pretty cool, I'd like to support them. Can they purchase stuff either online or do they have to come to the station here? Well, we don't have an online presence for the store at this point, okay. even though we do have a website. So you pretty much have to show up now. We'll be having an open house. We do that every October and we set up a store out in the bay basically okay. bring some of our material downstairs so they're welcome to buy things at that time right so what are some of the things you have in here you have the class a hats right well the class a hats and we have the dress uniforms of course you know pants shirt white shirts and all that um in here we have all the uh various accoutrements okay you know, for oh your pins shirts, pins badges and whatnot ties white gloves if we're doing a funeral, that type of situation. Okay. Um, then probably the most popular item is the t-shirt department. Everybody needs a new t-shirt. Absolutely. Right? So I think my have... closet completely full of uh, firefighter t-shirts. <laughs> yeah. So you can see we have a little bit of a display up here of some of the different uh, pipes that we have, different decorations we have on the shirts. So short sleeve, long sleeve, and then we, like I say, we have the collared shirts when we're doing details. Sweatshirts, hoodies, job shirts, hats. Yeah, you know, we can pretty much dress you for everything except your underwear. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. This is absolutely awesome to have. You don't see a whole lot of this. Every now and then you'll get, you know, maybe a locker full of uniforms or right. stuff like that. I usually got to order it, but you guys actually have it on hand, ready to go. Well, we think it, it adds to the spirit, you know, adds to the, uh, you know, what people feel as part of the company, makes them part of the team, as it were. Right. And that's what it is, basically, a team so and fire department. With that, do you also have, I know you have our sizes. Do you have children's sizes? So if I join the fire department? Yeah, we have a whole row of from the tiniest infant size up to a, a, you know a kid that would be just below a small size shirt, okay. an adult size. Okay. So, and yeah, we do that too. And then we have some other things. We have you know our company history book that we have here. Okay. You should probably get a chance to take a look yeah. at that at some point. You know we have patches, mugs, uh, our uh, 53 Mac that we have. We did a diecast model that we sell that old shields that we don't use and some miscellaneous other things right so, right and then we have some actual legitimate firefighting tool tools and like we have some lights there that people can individually right purchase because some people want their own okay as opposed to the one that's on the right. equipment this is absolutely awesome did you uh, write this book no i was involved <laughs> actually myself and one other fellow had a lot of material because we're the collectors as it were okay and we accumulated it but uh somebody else was actually the author of the book and uh Kind very, of goes through our history by the decade. Yeah, Shows very professionally done. All, so, yeah. You know, this is something that I think, you know, as a new member, would be a required reading to come into. I try to convince our new members <laughs> that they should grab one of these. We keep one down as a, a station copy so they can take a look. Right. If people are interested in, grab one to take home because they kind of get into it after a little bit of That's time. That's awesome. That's awesome to see. And, of course, all the patches. Do you guys participate in any kind of patch, patch exchange? 
Well, if somebody asks for something, we'll do that. Uh, we just had one uh, for the association, the county association recently, and a uh, lady off of one of the coffee wagons that service us asked for a patch they're doing a board. So we, you know, send it to them. But we don't have a board per se here like okay. a lot of stations do. Okay. Now, if uh, somebody, we get a lot of viewers all over the world, somebody from Germany or maybe the uh, UK, if they're interested in a patch, can they send you an email to tr maybe coordinate that? or They can email or send a you know, snail mail type situation with this. You know, we send them out to other firefighters as best we can. Obviously, we have a massive response to it. And we sell them to our own members for sure. about four dollars. If they want to throw a couple dollars in the envelope, that helps keep the operation and right. helps right. us buy the next T-shirt. Right, right. <laughs> and this helps support the company itself exactly. too. Exactly. So. Exactly. We try not to overcharge our members. We do it as a service to them, but you know it pays for itself. The store self-sustaining. Right. Excellent way to do this. And this is perfect. I looks like a regular store. I'd walk off the street on the ocean shore. But we, we try to keep everything. <laughs> everybody wants something different. So you have to stock as much as you can. Right. Well, thank you for doing it's a that. Pleasure. We, we appreciate that. Nice to meet you. Uh, when do you want to get your t-shirt? <laughs> we'll get it at the end. There you go. <laughs> so uh, this is awesome. Just having the elevator when you're lazy and you're tired and you're beat and you come back from a call and, and you're sleeping in. But again, just tons of pictures. Uh, of the history of the department, just historical photos, right. uh, pictures of our, our current squad. Uh, we actually have a huge quarry uh, in a second due box and a 17 box just above us, a uh, picture of our current squad with the crane at that quarry. Yeah. Whoever did the decorating for this knows what they're doing. <laughs> you know, I've lived it, it, in my house for, you know, 15, 20 years now, and I don't think mine's this decorated. Yeah, that definitely wasn't me. So this, this, is, this is cool, too. This is our, our, our bunk program, our, our bunk rooms. Uh, they're all numbered. Um, they're all um, accessible via a key fob. Uh, if folks come in and sleep at night, they'll usually put their name up on the board. Okay. Um, and we can kind of walk around and, you know, uh, having gone to college and on that experience, I, I got to tell you, these are as nice uh, as any college bunk room. Yeah. Uh, we would encourage anybody watching this Eternal. that's interested in joining Lutherville Fire Company that uh, goes to school locally or is thinking about coming to school here uh, that is interested in being a part of our company. We have a phenomenal uh, bunk in program and uh, we'd love for you to join us. Okay. There's an application process, there'll be interviews. There's a certain minimum amount of stuff that you have to do. Okay. Uh, but we have beautiful bunk rooms. Yeah, I mean, this is bed, everything that my desk. daughters had yeah. when they went to college exactly. at Messiah, which is yeah. a, you know, elite university. But you even have air conditioners yeah. for each room to control it how you if, want. If, if I ever need to run away from my family and my three kids <laughs> and get a great night's sleep, the, the front rooms have windows, the rear do not. I will go into one of these windowless cocoons, right. set the temperature just perfect. <laughs> Uh, it's pitch black, the best sleep I, I ever get. Right, you know, right. If, Absolutely fun. You wanna... So you talked about bunk-in program. We've done a, a segment before called live-in programs. Right. Is that essentially L what Live-in program, bunk-in yeah. program, yep. Okay. Yep, same so, difference. So what kind of benefits do they have to becoming a live-in here? Okay, so uh, live-ins here, again, free room and board. Uh, so you're not paying the typical room and board that you would. Let's say you went to Towson University, which is literally right up the block. You're going to save on room and board. Uh, free Wi-Fi. Uh, you've got all the amenities of home. You've got your flat screen TV. You've got a nice washer and dryer. You've got the beautiful industrial kitchen that we just showed you. You have a fitness center. I have none of this stuff in my, I have right. this stuff in my right. house, right. but I don't have a state of the art fitness center. So yeah. uh, you have all of that stuff here. Um, you also um, will get free training. Like I said before, we will, through the wisdom of the folks that belong to this company, uh, the chief officers, the, the, the career guys that, that lend their wisdom and support, you will get uh, lined up for training with all the MIFRI programs, Fire One, and, and then what else, whatever else you want to do. We encourage a lot of our members, since we do have a rescue squad, to get uh, vehicle and machine extrication training, VME training, uh, driver, you know, pumps training. Whatever you want to do, we will make it happen for you. And it's just a great stepping stone for really anything. I mean, if you want to go into the fire service full time, you will get an incredible amount of training here. If you want to go into medicine like I did, you're going to learn how to talk to people, take care of patients. Um, and then uh, probably the biggest thing that I didn't mention is just having the family at the station. So you can have other people living up here. You're going to have your firehouse family that you can have dinner with. Um, you're going to have just a huge spectrum of people. This station, we have a uh, pilot, a commercial airline pilot. We have lawyers. We have physicians. We have 
folks that are in finance, we have um, folks that do fire science and, and building protection. If, if there's something you're interested in, we have plumbers, we have electricians, we have carpenters, you name it. If there's something you're interested in, just by merely living here, you're gonna get, you're gonna get to know those people right. and they're gonna be able to guide you and, and set you up on a career and, and a path for success. 30 years ago, this is exactly what I would have done. You know, that's right. something that, you know, I look for in uh, EMS or fire. You know, how can you get involved? How do you get that? You know, when I started 29 years ago, I wasn't quite sure. They didn't have a whole lot of live-in programs where I was at. Right. You know, I just basically knocked on the door at the EMS station and it kind of went off from there. Right. But, you know, me not being married at that age, this would have been a perfect place to, to get yep. that education. Yep. Uh, and really for free, you know, right. colleges and stuff aren't cheap, right. you know, even just going to a fire school, if I were to do that on my own, you know, that's money out of my pocket and the fire department will help you do yeah. that. And, and again, we're, we're really lucky right where we sit at the convergence of 83 North South and the Beltway. We are very, very accessible to Towson University, Goucher University, uh, the Community College of Baltimore County, all the schools in Baltimore City, uh, Hopkins, the University of Maryland downtown campus. So. Um, this is a very, very convenient location to get anywhere. Um, so whether you're going to an undergraduate program uh, locally uh, or you're doing a graduate training program downtown, right. uh, very, very easy place to commute from. Imagine the money savings just on yeah, room and board abso alone. Absolutely. I, I wish I similarly, I wish I had known <laughs> about this when I was younger and would have loved to have done something So up like here, this. do they have any kind of kitchen, shower so, areas? So or? yeah, so if we walk around this way, there's a couple bathrooms. Uh, so there's a full bath here. Okay. Laundry room, so okay. lost power a couple of days ago. My wife made me come up here and do the laundry. <laughs> it's a new experience for me. Yeah, once again, the yeah. benefits of being right. a yeah. fire department. Another full bath. And then all of the rooms, I'll show you kind of on the front end. And they're um, all fobbed? They're all fobbed. To get in. So, so we, we know we, there's accountability. So we know who's here, who's not, right. uh, when they're here, when they're not, which, which is important for safety. So you want to know if somebody is here, potentially out on a, a rig, responding to a call. We also use it to track hours uh, as far as, you know, the, the amount of service that we mandate of folks to kind of stay active. Uh, but the, the nice thing about the front rooms is they have windows that overlook the front of the station. Right, right. Looks and, like someone set up for the day already. Yeah, and again, everywhere you look in the station, there's, there's history on the wall. Yeah. And this makes it feel homey, too. You know, when I'm at home, I put pictures of my kids. I put pictures of my dogs and all that right. kind of stuff up. You are putting your family up on right. the wall. Absolutely. How do you get down from here? Is there um, any kind of fire yep. pole or so anything like that? So we, we have, well, if you include jumping out of the window, okay. bailing out of the window, <laughs> yeah. we, have, we have four options. Okay. So we can go back down this way and we can go down the stairwell. Yep. Okay. Second floor administrative wings. First floor is the living area with the kitchen and so forth. Um, we have a staircase on the front that goes down right through the center of the engine base. Okay. Um, we also have, as every good firehouse should have. Oh. A nice pole. Okay. With and this long, goes all the way drop. down to the engine yep. bay. So, yep, three story drop right down to the engine bay. Okay. Can I go down it? Hell yeah. All right. Let me just have you sign this waiver first. <laughs> that is a nice way to get down to the engine bay. I love that it's kind of in that glass, too. Yeah. Yep. Get you right down to the engine bay. Now I can go either way. And you can see portions of our training center. Um, okay. Through which we can throw ladders through those windows that I showed you before, and we can do that for you if you'd like. Uh, but yeah, it took us from our bunk quarters through our training center down to the engine bay. That's awesome to have. Lightning speed. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, can we throw some ladders up yeah, and see absolutely. what that training center is? Yep. Like? So we'll, uh, we'll train, we'll go out into the community and train all the time. We do a ton of training, collaborative training with the career units, other volunteer stations. Uh, but we also have a, a very unique setup where we can do training in bad weather inside. Um, so not only can we train in the engine bay using all of our equipment, uh, but we can also throw ladders, conduct searches in this little kind of uh, house apartment setup that we have. Um, and uh, so you'll see us out here doing a lot of that right. stuff. I like the fact that you actually put a kind of a sticky thing on the floor too, because yeah. these floors yeah, can these are, you'll, you'll, you'll you'll lose it. You'll slide. So you just basically threw up a roof ladder, Correct. which is why the hooks are yep. on it. Yep. We'll make it up to the window. Can yep. I, we climb yeah, up and take a look? Yeah, let's climb up and take a look. You All want right. to do you want to? This is Harrison Maybe Linker. He's going to put the ladder you for me. Right. Well, you want you want to go first? Go ahead. All right, I'll go up. Climb right through the window. All right. Dude, check this out. 
This is absolutely awesome. I would have had no idea this is up here. All right, you're good, Chief. Come on up. Yeah, so this is another hidden gem of the station, not so hidden, uh, right off the engine bay, right off our gym, right off right. our indoor training area, where we can, uh, old members, new members, we, we don't, uh, one of the things somebody told me about the station is, uh, don't expect to sit in the recliners too much and watch TV, which I think is a big misconception in the, in the fire service, volunteer and career. Um, yeah, we do have downtime, we do relax, um, but it is uh, very common to see us in nice weather throwing ladders uh, against the side of the building outside okay, um, and, and kind of doing speed drills uh, and then throwing ladders in here during training nights, teaching folks how to do searches, um, remove victims. We have, a, we have a full size mannequin down there that weighs a metric ton <laughs> that, that we'll put up here that you have to throw over your shoulder and, yeah, and kind of get out. Uh, and then, you know, kind of simulates a, a bedroom or an apartment right. uh, with the door. I that, love that the kind fact of, that, you know, you're utilizing pretty much every nook and cranny of your department. Right. You know, you're not, this, you know, was pretty much almost a wasted space. If it's you probably didn't, just a storage space. Yeah, yeah storage yeah. space. But right. you're like, you know what? Let's think outside the box. We right. need training. Right. Let's set this up as something. So, you know, using some of the old dorm furniture, whatever you right. got, or whatever you Absolutely. got donated, it's a perfect way to yeah. do this. Yeah. You may not have to flow water, but pulling a hose Absolutely. up here. You know, like you said, getting a, a body out the window. Right. You even put in the tie-ons. Yep. up here just for safety and, yep. yeah so mm -hmm. if you need to you know maybe put them out on a stokes back and, right. and have them repel a little bit right you know you got it all set up right yeah. here in the firehouse yeah. that's absolutely amazing yeah. i love that yeah big big emphasis on training around here right right so and, you know just doing a right-handed search this is a typical bedroom you know if i go back to where i live in coatesville you know the size of this you're thinking oh that's too small right no this is yeah. pretty much a, right. a, a typical bedroom right very, very, so. very realistic looking <laughs> there you little, go. little people, but rest assured, we actually have a full sized mannequin and, and we'll use each other right. to, you know, practice bringing each other down the ladder and so forth. Yeah, this is awesome. And the only way back out of this is back down the ladder, right? Back down the way we came. All right. Yep. So before we get to all the apparatus, I noticed that this is a big engine bay. I saw the washer and dryer for the gear. You had right. the um, extractor. What else do you have back here? So all the things you would typically find in station, uh, our engineer's office, where all the repairs are done. As we come down, we've got our watch room, our radio room, where a lot of our members are hanging out, waiting for the big one to drop. Yep. Um, we have our SCBA fill and- uh, Okay. Where we can fill up all our, our tanks. Right. So you don't have to send them out. You do it all right here. All right here. So I guess you got another washer and dryer. Right, another washer you know, and dryer. Truck towels. Yep. <laughs> and then just a separate entrance to the game room, study room. That's where we kind of sit, hit in the beginning of the video. Correct, right. Okay, yep. so you can go in and out. Yep. I love the fact that you have the racks, the black racks. A lot of them are, are red, Right. Uh, but everybody has their own rack. They got their set of gear. How much gear do you guys offer? Do you do them two sets, one set? So we, um, you'll notice that most of our gear is black. That's kind of the unique signature of our station. Uh, Baltimore County issues tan gear. Okay. We've chosen as just uh, to go with tradition and, and keep our black gear, but we do have members that have come from other stations or come from career stations and join us and, and bring their tan gear. As far as standard issue, helmet, uh, we're fortunate that we're upgrading a lot of our gear right now. So uh, okay. this, this is my gear, uh, face piece, um, and then uh, accountability, pat tags, the standard stuff. Right, right. All right, so next big thing, let's take a look at these trucks here. All right, sounds good. So the first one we're gonna come up to is what? So this is our squad, Squad 303. Um, you're not gonna see anything like this uh, in Baltimore County. Uh, so Squad 303 is known for its crane. Wow, okay. A, a crane on a fire truck. Crane on a fire truck. <laughs> okay. Um, so it, so th this does not carry water, um, but this is uh, used for, this is dispatched to uh, working fires, uh, vehicle rescues, uh, overland rescues, rope rescues. So it's a 2008 Pierce Velocity rescue. Uh, it seats one, two, eight folks. Okay. Uh, we have uh, every seat has SB SCBA loaded into it. Uh, full array of rescue tools. So why would you need a crane? So I, I've seen, you know, I, I, I'm not the oldest member around here, but um, having been involved in Baltimore County fire for over a decade, I've seen this used to lift vehicles that are in weird positions um, to, to reach people, uh, to get them lifted out with the Stokes basket from otherwise inaccessible areas. 
Um, you know, if you can think about how somebody can get into trouble, right. um, you, you gotta, you have to have a lot of things in your toolbox. Okay. The crane is just another thing in the toolbox right, to potentially right. lift things off. So it, it's kind of a, a hybrid between the towers and a rescue. Right. You know, it has the rescue equipment on it. You have the capability to reach out. We just did a, a company out in Dolphin County that they do rescue off the side. So they put the eye hooks and then they have to bring out a tripod in right. order to do that. You have it already set and ready right. to go. Right. Man, that's pretty slick. Yeah. All right, what do we got next to here? So 3, 000, uh, engine 307 is a 2001 Pierce as well that has a 500 gallon tank, uh, seat six. And um, we alternate between 301 and 307 as far as which comes out of uh, the house first. Okay, so you don't have a designated piece always. You, you kind of rotate them. So, so we're a three engine house. Um, the unique thing about engine 302, which I'll show you in a few minutes, is it has a thousand gallon tank. And so if we go out onto the beltway, which doesn't have a great water supply, okay, uh, we'll typically take 302 to the beltway because of the thousand gallon tank versus these two engines, 301 okay. and 307, which have 500 gallon tanks. So these are pretty much twins. Yes. Okay. They're very similarly outfitted. So this is a very interesting piece. Yeah, so this was uh, used in Lutherville way back in the day and repurchased by Lutherville, I believe in 1990, and then fully restored to uh, operating uh, conditions. Okay, and this is a 1953 Mac, if I did my research yes. right. Man, this is absolutely beautiful. It's definitely parade ready. You know, I would love to take this one for a ride one day. Right, and we keep it right in one of our front bays just so the community can see it. Yeah, it's not even a museum piece. You can right. actually it's, can start this up, pull right. it out, and actually, you know, use it for what you need it. Absolutely. So, how many bays do we have? We have one, two, three, four, four five, six, six bays. bays. Wow. So yeah. over here, uh, we have our two utilities. So 306 is called a special, special utility. Okay. And 304 is a utility. These are primarily used for uh, EMS first response, uh, but they can be used for a host of other things. We use them to, um, if we need additional personnel bought to a fire scene, we can ferry them in one of our special utilities. Uh, special utility, our special unit 306 has a winch, has tools, and, and can be used for a variety of conditions. We typically won't bring these small pieces out on the interstate just because of the danger associated with the traffic flow. We'll use just our, our big engines, and specifically engine 302, which has a thousand gallon tank okay. uh, to protect things on our, our interstates. Right. Uh, but uh, this is outfitted with uh, all, uh, both are similarly outfitted with EMS, first response, uh, medical equipment, AEDs, fire extinguishers, forcible entry tools. Uh, Special Unit 306 has a winch on the front, um, and, and this is our newest piece. Yeah, that's a F-350? Yes. Uh, super duty, very beautiful truck. I would love to take that one for a ride, yeah. too. So uh, you mentioned that you guys go out on first responder stuff, too. Are you guys EMTs, paramedics, or just refer sort of first responder? How does it work in Maryland? Yeah, so um, in Maryland, uh, in this station specifically, um, we, we are a true fire station. You saw that we have, we have three fire engines, we have a rescue squad, we have the antique, we have a special unit, we have a utility. We, are, um, we don't have a medic unit, we don't have an ambulance. However, a lot of our calls are for EMS first response. So as you know, uh, EMS volumes, call volumes have gone way up. Um, we'll take virtually any piece, all of our pieces carry EMS first response equipment, okay. AEDs. Uh, and as far as level of training, uh, it, it runs the gamut from just learning uh, EMR, EMT, some old historical CRTs, okay. cardiac rescue techs, yeah. to paramedics, to some physicians. Okay, yeah. uh, that's so, like my old EMT MAST certification right. we used to have. So <laughs> I, I started in Massachusetts and I was an EMT MAST when I started as well. And yeah. MAST trousers yeah. don't get used anymore. <laughs> exactly. Closest thing we have are pelvic binders, so. which are also maybe going It's away. nice that you guys do cross train. You do help with the medical aspect of it. Even though you don't have transport capability, it's all about that teamwork, right. you know, between fire, police, and EMS. Right. And that's really what the Heroes Next Door right. is about. And, and it's important to know that for anybody interested in joining the station, that you will get, uh, if you're interested in the EMS side of things, you will get a ton of experience doing that. Just by virtue of our squad being dispatched to all the rescues and heavy rescues, you're often gonna be in the fray taking care of patients as you're cutting them out of the car. Our two utilities, our special unit, our utility, and, and all of our engines do a ton of EMS first response, both in the Lutherville area, and again, up and down the Beltway and Interstate 83. So. Whether you're looking for firefighting experience, EMS experience, you want to help us with administrative duties, um, any of the above, uh, there's something here for you at Lutherville. So.
So to finish out the end of this, this is a... Yep, so Utility 304 is, I believe, a 2001 Chevy Suburban. Okay. Um, has a nice pull-out tray in the back uh, with, um, again, uh, EMS first response equipment, forcible entry tools, um, some fluff to put down its spills. Um, it can go out into the community as an EMS first response vehicle. It can go out bringing some of our additional staff to supplement. If we have an engine on scene and they need more help, uh, we can ferry people back and forth between uh, classes. So if you're taking a, a MIFRI class uh, up north, and uh, we have a lot of young members okay. that may not have their own cars or, or even a driver's license yet, um, we can ferry them in our, our utility to their every classes. Truck, every station right. needs a utility. Right. And then last but not least, this was that 1,000-gallon truck. Right, so 302 is our 1,000-gallon uh, engine, and we typically will bring 302 out the door when we have calls on our interstates, 83 or 695 because of the 1,000 gallon capacity. Right, right, because most of those don't have hydrants. Right, there, there are hydrants kind of hidden behind the sound barriers, but they're, they're definitely not readily accessible. And when you need water, you need water. Okay, okay. Man, David, this is a beautiful station. Thank you for taking us around and showing us everything that you have here. You know, when I did my research online, I, you know, kind of look at your website and stuff like that. You don't really get the feel of it until you get here and realize how much stuff you have. Uh, you know, that training room that you have, the crew rooms, the live-in program, everything that anybody wants uh, is right here at Lutherville. So you guys are doing it right. We really appreciate yeah, you inviting you us out. out. You know. And again, if you're interested in joining us, lvfc.com backslash join. So once again, this was Heroes Next Door. We did a station cruise with Lutherville Fire Department just outside of Baltimore. If you're ever in the area and you want to get some merchandise, stop by. They'd be happy to help you out. But before we end, hit that subscribe notification and smash those like buttons. We're trying to hit that 100,000 subscriber mark. With your guys' help, we can do that. But we'll see you again next week. Thank you for watching.